Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be taking you through the process of balancing off accounts. So firstly then, what is balancing off an account and why do we do it? Well, we know that within each account in a business's general ledger, there is going to be a number of transactions and they could be debits, credits, or a mixture of the two. Now the balance on each account within the general ledger is the difference between its debit entries and its credit entries. Think about your own personal bank account. You've got transactions where money is coming in and you've got transactions where money is going out. The difference between what's come in and gone out will be your bank balance. And that is essentially what we're doing when balancing off our accounts in the general ledger. We're finding the difference between the debit entries and the credit entries. Now, if your debit entries are higher than your credit entries, then you've got an overall debit balance on the account, or alternatively, if the credit entries equal more than the debit entries, then you've got an overall credit balance on your account. So that answers the question, what is balancing off the accounts, and to some extent, how? But why do we bother doing it at all? Well, by balancing off each account, it gives the business a clear view at the beginning and the end of each period, usually monthly, as to what value is in each account. Imagine if we didn't balance off each account and every time we wanted to know the value of an account, we had to add up all the debits and all the credits from the last five years. It would take you half an hour every time you wanted to get balance. So it gives us that nice clean break, as I said at the start and end of a month to see what we're working with. Another reason for doing this is that the balance on each account in your general ledger makes up the business as trial balance. Now, if you're not sure what the trial balance is, I've covered that in a separate video, which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video. Now let's have a look at a couple of examples to show you how it's done. You have been provided with the following bank account for Star Industries Limited. There are a number of transactions in the account and you've been tasked with balancing off the account at the end of the month. So the first thing you need to do is add up all the debit entries. So if we do that here, that gives us a total amount for the debit entries of £42,780. We'll then note that figure down on a notepad or for the purposes of this video, I've included it on screen. We'll then repeat the process for the credit column. So add up all the credit entries and that comes to £26,140. We can see here that the debit entries are higher than our credit entries, so we can already say that the account will have an overall debit balance. But at this stage, we still don't know the actual balance. Now that we have the totals for each column, we need to find the difference between the two. We therefore would do the debit amount of £42,780 minus the credit amount of £26,140, which gives us the balance of £16,640. To enter this into our accounts at the end of the period, in this case the month, it will always go into the account on the lower of the two sides. In this case, that would be the credit side. This balancing entry at the end of the period is always referred to and titled the balance carried down, often abbreviated to balance C slash D. By entering this in, both our debit and credit column now match in value, and we can show this by entering in the totals for each column. The final step happens at the start of the next period where the balance carried down is what's then known as brought down back onto the higher side of the account. In this case, that would be the debit side. This is your starting point for the new period and provides you with an overall balance on the account. This is also the figure that is used when producing the trial balance. I'll now run through one final example just to reiterate the process and what we've covered so far. So heading back to Star Industries Limited and we've got another account, this time the payables ledger control, and we can see that we've got a number of transactions on the account. Your task again is to balance off the account, so let's repeat the process. Add up the debit transactions on the account, which gives you a total of £4,960, and let's note this down. Then add up your credit transactions on the account, which comes to a total of £8,350. 
Now in this example, we can see that the credits are higher than the debits, and therefore there will be an overall credit balance on the account. Next then, calculate the difference between the two sides, which gives you an amount of £3,390. This then needs to be entered onto the lower side of the account. In this case, that was the debit side. And remember, this is referred to as the balance carried down. Now that this has been entered, our two columns will equal the same amount, and this can be displayed within the totals boxes. The final step is to bring our balance carried down onto the higher side of the account at the start of the next period. Let's do that now by bringing it back onto the credit side of the account. And remember, this is referred to as the balance brought down and will be our starting point for the next period. And that wraps up this video on balancing off accounts within accounting. Hope you found this video useful and remember if you have to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more accounting videos. That's game for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.